looking home There is no one Once there was a house Dünyanın gelmiş geçmiş en değerli, en iz bırakmış sanatçılarından biri Peter Gabriel. <gülüyor> 1950 yılında İngiltere'de Surrey kasabasında doğar. Henüz 17 yaşındayken 5 arkadaşıyla birlikte bir rock grubu kurar. Genesis. İlerleyen yıllarda müzik tarihinin en çok satan ve sevilen gruplarından biri olacaktır. Ancak Peter Gabriel 1975 yılında gruptan ayrılır. Solo kariyeri iki yıl sonra çıkardığı albüm ile başlar. Albümler albümleri izler. Söz yazarlığı ve sahne performanslarındaki görsel zenginlik ile adından söz ettirir. Zirveyi ise 1986 yılında So isimli albüm ile yakalar. Bu albümün haftalarca bir numarada kalan şarkısı Slash Hammer'ın videosu tüm zamanların en iyi müzik videosu seçilir. Dokuz albüme ve pek çok film müziğine imza atan Peter Gabriel, dünya müziğinin tanıtılması için özel çalışmalar yapar. Uluslararası Sanat, Müzik ve Dans Vakfı, WOMAD'ın kurucularından ve en önemli destekleyicilerinden biridir. Yerel müzik yapan sanatçıları desteklemek için Real World stüdyolarını açar. Altı Grammy ödüllü sanatçı, aynı zamanda bir insan hakları savunucusu ve aktivisttir. Şimdi Peter Gabriel ile Londra'da buluşuyoruz. Çünkü aramızda müzik var. Burada Londra'da Peter Gabriel ile birlikteyiz Caroline stüdyolarında. Then how are you? I'm very well indeed, thank you. We were in uh, Real World Studio, it was uh, two years ago, I think. Yeah. And uh, we had a beautiful time there. I'm glad. We had a beautiful album. Good. With a beautiful studio. Fantastic. And uh, we, like. we were staying there. Uh, also, the your cook, the French guy. Yeah. I don't know if he is still there. He's still there. And he was cooking a beautiful meals to us, Good. you know. No. And we had really f a great time there. Good. Now, uh, I think if you get the food right, <laughs> everything else is possible. Yeah. Uh, Peter, it's a, it's a very tough task to interview you because to in, it's, it's like to interviewing six people. I move very fast. Yeah, you are a uh, musician, <laughs> innovator, uh, actor, hum <laughs> human rights activist, uh, businessman. And also very important humanitarians of the century. As a musician, you have already achieved everything from writing uh, film scores from uh, Martin Scorsese to uh, getting inducted uh, to Rock and Roll Hall of Fame twice. How we can handle it all of this? Well, I think as an old man, you don't take any of that very seriously. You know, it's it's great. Uh, I mean, you know, being a pop star, it's uh, a fun place to visit, but it's a lousy place to live, you know, I think. Um, people who can't go out to the supermarket because they get recognized and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. it's, so, 
I only had a short period in the 80s where it was like that for me. So I think since then, um, I've learned just to follow interesting things. So I, I do, well, I think it's a bit like dogs in the park, you know. <laughs> you sniff something interesting uh, and you jump on it. And you jump for all of it? I jump, I jump a lot, yes. And, and how you can find time for that? I'm not very good with that. I'm not very good at managing my time. And now, you know, I, I'm a dad again. And I've got two boys, 13 and six, and, mm. and I do the school run every day, you know, so I, I want to be an a, um, active dad and, and my grandpa now, so, uh, so I want time for family life. Um, I have three grandchildren. So, yeah. okay. Is, uh, so uh, when you were 19, you were playing flute. Yeah. In the Kathmandu uh, recording yeah. of the Kathmandu. Yeah. With how how it happened? With Cat Stevens as as you was then. Uh, um, I um, I liked his music a lot, and mm -hmm. I was trying to persuade his producer Paul Samuel Smith to work with. Genesis because mm -hmm. I thought he was a great producer. Mm -hmm. um, he really got great sounds and knew how to balance things. Mm -hmm. um, and he eventually agreed to uh, work on a, a tape we did for the BBC, which is to accompany a, a visual artist. Mm -hmm. um, and I got to know him a little through that. Um, I was a bad flute player. I don't play well. But when they were trying to find someone to play on um, uh, Yousef's record, or Cat Stevens as he was then. Um, I think I was probably the only flute player Paul knew, so he gave me a call, and I was very excited and very nervous. So they <laughs> they taped me just before I was playing, and you could hear this sort of <gasps> nervous panic. <laughs> but um, but I, I was proud of that. Yeah, this is a great stuff. It's, really. they're, they're good records, yeah. Yeah, they're great. Also, in the uh, 60s, Kathmandu was visited by Jimi Hendrix, yeah. uh, Janis Chaplin, uh, Bob Marley, uh, also Mick Jagger. Yeah. And uh, it was seen like a, a metaphoric ha haven. Uh, no, I, th I think there's always been an allure mm -hmm. um, from the East, you know, to... I mean, I'm an old hippie too, so there's, this was a... We all, we all, we, we yeah. Are this. I'm <laughs> so, 68 yeah. generation. Right, no? I'm 65 now. So, oh, it's yeah. from 68. Eighth generation. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All, all we are. Yeah. Soul of hippie, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was that was a very exciting time because it was the first time when young people seemed to be in charge of the world, uh, or at least having real influence. Mm. And so um, uh, there was all this idealism. Um, Mm -hmm. And some of it wasn't realistic and didn't pan out, but I think it opened a lot of us to all sorts of ideas. And in fact, you know, one of the Bibles then was a thing called the Whole Earth Catalog, and and, and I'm, I'm a good friend now of the guy who started that, Stuart mm -hmm. Brand, and uh, and still it's it's full of of ideas. And the subtext there was access to tools. Mm -hmm. um, And, and I'm still following that example. We have a project called the toolbox.org and, mm -hmm. uh, and some of my benefit work, it's about practical tools for people. So, mm -hmm. so that's just one example. But I think there, was, there were a lot of things from that time which just allowed us to think differently and not yeah. be afraid of the world. Yeah. I know you are not, never afraid of the world. Oh, I'm, I am yeah. sure. I'm, I'm as afraid as anyone, but... Yeah. but I think now I've learnt when you have an idea to to follow it, to follow and it, chase yeah. it. Okay, in in ninety ninety four, you have starred in a short film Recon. Yeah, there was yeah. Uh, some other talk from, but uh, I mean to be honest, I had a place in film school, mm -hmm. um, but that was as a director, and in a oh, way, a director. Ah. that that was more interesting to me. It was, yeah, it was more interesting, of course. Well, I don't. I mean, you know, I admire. Uh, great actors, but I don't think I could do that. And in a way, I think you have to sort of hollow yourself out to suck in this other personality. And um, uh, whereas 
I'm more comfortable just pushing myself out on the world. I just did one this year. You did? Yeah, I did one Great. this year, yeah. And, and how was it? I was the uh, owner of a bank, you know. Oh. And there was a group uh, yeah. who wanted to be famous, they want to be famous, and yeah. they stole the bank. Ah, great. My bank, you know, and that's why I, I know what, what's to be uh, the artist to, to make a role, you know. It's not yeah. easy. Uh, no, it's, it's a lot harder than you think. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's harder than music to make music. I yeah. believe this, you know. Well, and the other thing is, you know, a good director can make a bad actor look good. Yeah. But an okay director or someone who's great with visuals but not with people. Mm -hmm. um, can sometimes, you know, you have really bad acting from really good actors. So, so you're completely at the mercy yeah. of the director. But personally, I believe that you could act beautifully. Well, that's very this kind of you. Feel, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And in the, um, it, I, it was the same year nearly uh, that you did uh, video for Sledgehammer? Um, I think that was, was that 86 maybe? Or I'm not it, sure. It was the video chosen by Rolling Stones, the best video ever. I think it's still got the more, more views than any other, which um, the, one of the old bosses of MTV told me. Mm -hmm. But um, it was a wonderful director, Stephen R. Johnson, mm -hmm. and we had just a great creative team. There were people from Artman Animation and the brothers Quay. Uh, and so a lot of people throwing in ideas. Um, and we would there weren't any rules then. You know, we had a reasonable budget. I mean, in those days, the artists would have to pay for it any, anyway in the end, but, but it was um, an opportunity really to try doing stuff. And um, it took a, about a week of filming and about a month to, to prepare it, but, um, but it was a lot of fun. First time when I watched this, this video, yeah. I was so exciting. Great. And really, I said, wow, man. Yeah. It was a great video. Really, it was a great stuff. Great, thank you. Also, in 2006, you were awarded Man of Peace Prize by Nobel Peace Prize yeah. laureates. In 2008, you were also chosen by uh, Amnesty International yeah. as an ambassador of conscience. Yeah. It's a great honor. No, they are real honors, and, uh, and they mean a lot. Um, and you get more of them when you're old. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> and uh, can you talk uh, about the the organization that you founded by you witness uh, the two? Uh, uh, yeah. Well, you know, I wasn't really much involved with human rights when I was growing up, so it was just something I'd read about. And then uh, I got when I wrote the Biko song about what was going on in South Africa, that was like a calling card. And then suddenly. You know, Bono calls up and says, you've got to come on this amnesty tour. And, um, and then I started meeting people who've been tortured or seen some of the family members killed. And suddenly it becomes uh, a real issue, you know, when you're mm. looking at someone and they're telling their story directly. Yeah. You feel it in a different... Yeah. Whoops, that's the microphone. Right. Uh, Drop my water no too. Problem. You feel it in a different way. Um, and, uh, and then I became... Uh, engaged and um, and I did Bono's job on a uh, 88 tour going around the world um, and I hustled you know uh, Springsteen and Sting and uh, mm -hmm. various others uh, Yusu Tracy Chapman to come and join us uh, going around the world for the Declaration of Human Rights the 40th anniversary um, and it was amazing you know we we uh, it I think changed uh, all of the musicians that took part, mm -hmm. but what I found extraordinary was that people, you know, could suffer terribly, uh, you know, lose a yeah. member of their family, yeah. but then the government could deny it and say, no, it didn't happen, ah. uh, you know, this is just propaganda, ah. and, and it was very hard if you just had a written report, but when there was um, video and you have either, you know, some evidence, or you have someone telling you the story directly. You know, we're pretty good at knowing yeah. when people are acting and when people are telling the truth. Yeah. You know, I think a good test for that is listening to the radio. Yeah. You switch on and you hear 10 seconds. Is it acting or is it telling the truth? Yeah. And most of us feel it. You know, we, yeah. 
so uh, we were just encouraging people to get video cameras out to, to wherever there was pro human rights problems so people could then tell their stories. And that was the dream of, of Witness. And uh, then, of course, the telephone company made sure that we had cameras in every telephone. So they did the job way better than we did. So then Witness changed in t terms of helping people, training people, getting distribution, making sure the right people saw the video. And now we have a sort of new digital version so that um, we can Im embed metadata on the film as it's taken which then means it can be used as evidence in a court or in an international criminal court, as has happened, and uh, also was an informer cam project where you can disguise people's faces. Yeah. So you want to show, well, this is what happened in the protest or people got beaten up here, um, but you don't want to show the, the immediate faces of the people yeah. sending in the film, so you can hide that but still show the rest of it. Yeah. So that's what we do now. Sorry, I'm, uh, I'm talking. That's, that's great, yeah, that's great. But, uh, but uh, I, we need this, this, the information anyway. Yeah. And also, I know that you founded another organization called Elders. The Elders. With uh, Richard Branson. With Richard Branson. And uh, also yeah. launched by uh, Nelson Mandela. I think. Yeah. What, what, how was it? Well, I think that's from growing up as a kid and thinking superheroes can come and sort out problems. <laughs> but um, there were people, I mean, it was a sense that um, there are people who have wisdom and some experience from their life who could offer uh, good advice and maybe help shift things a little bit. But um, it's quite hard if, if they're you know, on their own. And so we have some former heads of state, you know, Mandela launched it with Grassa mm. Michelle, his wife, yeah. and they invited a group in, which included uh, Tutu and Jimmy mm. Carter, Muhammad mm. Yunus originally, Gro Brundtland, who's you know, really the first head of state to take the environment seriously, mm. Mary Robinson, you know, mm. famous for human rights work too. Um, we had um, Lakdar Brahimi, um, mm. you know, originally from Algeria, but you know, very good what, negotiator. What was the name? Lakdar Brahimi. I'm probably pronouncing. Ah, Brahimi, okay. Yeah. Um, then um, uh, uh, Cardoso from Brazil. Um, we we now have Zadio from uh, Mexico, and Hina Jahani from Pakistan, and uh, um, uh, I'm sure I've left out somebody. Oh, Marty Atisari mm. uh, from Finland, but he's also and and so many of these won Nobel prizes, but they're extraordinary people, and. Uh, there's, there, there's nobody from Turkey, no? Uh, not, not yet, <laughs> but I mean, the elders now select other elders, so... Yeah. But um, I think, uh, I mean, the, the dream is that you have this technological world. Suddenly, for the first time, we can picture pretty much everybody having a smartphone. You know, they're going to mm. be smartphones for $10 very soon. Yeah. So then... What do you do with that? And I think you can have popular movements mm -hmm. that are uh, connect global citizens. It's beautiful. And they need um, representation. I mean, the elders currently, you know, help in conflict resolution. You know, now they're fighting for climate change and women's rights, um, but and many particular problems. No. But but but I. I'm still very hopeful that we can um, build a sort of global citizenry movement and that they might be able to represent the, the voices of the voiceless. Mm -hmm. Because for so long, governments have been able to say, OK, yeah. we're the bosses of yeah. our territory. Yeah. And anything that happens inside is an internal affair. You go away. Don't tell us what to do. You know, this is. Uh, our property and every government acts like this but well some more than others but now I think we have the possibility to see a time where global citizens mm -hmm. will say to governments yeah. like <clears throat> there's a guy I know Bill Browder mm -hmm. 
uh, he, um, his father, grandfather was the head of the American Communist Party, Party. and then he became the biggest venture capitalist, non-Soviet capitalist in um, Russia. Mm -hmm. But as he discovered corruption, um, he exposed it, and his lawyer found a lot of evidence, and his lawyer was murdered. Mm -hmm. So he then campaigned for a bill in America at first, but hopefully to roll out in the world, where those people that were uh, confirmed that had something to do with Magnitsky's death mm. um, shouldn't travel to the US, shouldn't be able to educate their kids there, and uh, shouldn't be able to hold bank accounts. Wow. Now, if you imagine global citizens um, campaigning really hard, uh, but their governments don't allow people that are, you know, the bad guys into their country, mm. no visas, no bank accounts, no education, no shopping, wow. um, then suddenly you start to imagine a time where, where ordinary people can have real leverage yeah. over governments. And then you don't get governments at the top of the pyramid. Yeah. You get the people at the top. Yeah. And governments are supposed to be servants of the people. Yeah. And we need to remind them of that That's very beautiful. regularly. I, I would like, I would please to be the part of it yeah. in, uh, in the future. It, Great. It's, it's, it's an honor, honor to be there. Well, it's a dream still, but yeah. I think it's closer to, to happening. Yeah, that's great. Your, your interest is to, to percussion. I love drums, yeah. I, yeah, I was a terrible drummer. It's legendary. But, yeah, I know. I wish my playing was legendary, yeah. but it's not. It's my enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but I mean, you can't say it like that. Yeah, in a way. And uh, yeah. what is the drums? Uh, the, this uh, uh, gated drum sound. Oh, and, uh, yeah. I believe you have buried all the symbols, you know. Yeah. And uh, well, <laughs> well, I always like to try different things, and I think sometimes when you, um, I mean, I actually like symbols, but sometimes. When you, um, let me come at it another way. To make music more, more dark or uh, yeah. mysterious, that's why. Well, also, I think if you want to castrate an artist, mm -hmm. you say, you are free to do anything. Yeah. And they don't know what to do. You know, I, you, know you can do anything. Okay. The, what, what I'm going to do. Right. <laughs> But if you say to an artist, now, here's something. You can't go here. Yeah. You can't do this. That and you mustn't do that, then they think, oh, well, maybe, maybe I can find a way. Yeah. You know, I, think, I think we're devious people. And um, so sometimes it's good. You make a rule. You say, okay, to the drummer, right, you're not allowed to play cymbals. I'm going to take all the cymbals yeah, away. And now you have to do something different. And they think, oh. The creativity. Yeah, suddenly. Grow up, yeah. Yeah, but sometimes you need to have your hands yeah, yeah. tied yeah, yeah. before you start thinking differently yeah. that's beautiful so this is the idea this is your your uh, t uh, thought of revolution in any way well maybe uh, uh, yeah it's, it's great i really appreciate that uh, okay in my opinion a very human point of view uh, is you have opted to stay with your sick daughter and your wife uh, rather than going on tour with genesis was well oh, we was making an album at the time yeah I, were, uh, I, but that was You know, I can't imagine anybody not putting their family first. Uh, yeah, of course. But so, but people. I mean, and sometimes the job makes it impossible. But mm -hmm. yeah, you know, for me, I made that decision. You know, it was we thought we were going to lose her, so there was no question. Of course. Of that's where I have to be, and um, but at that time, I, although Phil had. A, kid most of the band didn't really understand this they thought yeah, i was just I that, yeah. being a singer and being difficult like yeah. usual <laughs> uh, yesterday i was watching on tv here in, in, yeah. in london and uh, i saw interviewing uh, phil collins all oh, right yeah and uh, he said that we, we're gonna make a tour yeah. with genesis with peter gabriel with all the old, old friends together is it true oh. yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, we talked about it at one point but i um and then 
I just thought it was growing to be a bigger thing, you know, because we have no problems now. We, mm. we are friendly with each other and um, yeah. there's no issue like that. But it is it's quite a commitment of time. You know, we tried, mm -hmm. when I did this World Music Festival, WOMAD, yeah, originally. I was asking that. Yeah, well, we, you know, went bankrupt and we lost a lot of money and I didn't have that sort of money then. So mm. Genesis were generous enough to offer ah. to redo... Um, you know, the band as a fundraiser for WOMAD. So ah, that's how we, we paid off most of the debts at that time. Um, but I learned then, because they were on tour, uh, we didn't rehearse enough. Because, <laughs> well, it's the uh, same story, but I think to get, you know, decent standard, you you need to remember, particularly when you haven't mm -hmm. played things for a long while. So, so I thought, actually, it, it might be a lot of work. Mm -hmm. I mean, so there's nothing planned. Um, and we're all getting older all the time, but um, so I think it's unlikely, but not impossible. Mm, that's good. We hope to, to okay. see you anyway at, all together in some tour, some tour, and I think that everybody wants to watch you. And you know, when when the years pass, you know, of, yeah. when you get older, yeah, and uh, all the fights in the uh, yeah. uh, uh, old years you know it's they, they we forget everything you know and sometimes Although it's, get it's funny get. though because we did this um music uh, when they were re-releasing we uh redid a version of carpet crawlers mm. um and being back in the studio uh we just got into the same roles that we had done <laughs> at school in the band <laughs> and and now you know he's like <laughs> yeah i know but but we can laugh and, laugh at them yeah. you know which was different yeah i was just asking can you tell us womad how is that going womad now womad is now for many years it was a bit up and down and yeah. always going to go out of business but now it seems solid and uh mm -hmm. we have australia and new zealand too which have just happened and they mm -hmm. went really well best ever That's um good. and i think you know in, in england now it's it's very strong so and there are a lot of other countries we're we're being asked to um, to do it in so for me that's still exciting you know that it's it's again i think a bit of an old hippie dream but it's of integrating people and uh finding different ways to work together mm -hmm. and um and enjoying the differences but it's now very well known organization this woman some yeah. yeah in some places yeah yeah i think we've been lucky that you know we've been able to export it so yeah um no, they're, they're a good group of people. Then, thank you good. very much. No, my pleasure. Sevgili seyirciler, bu haftaki programımızın da sonuna geldik. Londra'daydık. Peter Gabriel'le birlikteydik. Aramızda müzik vardı. Sizin de aranızda sınırlar değil, sevgi, hoşgörü ve müzik olsun. Hoşçakalın.